Where are you guys anyway? We're sort of a club. Yeah, the Losers Club. So with the original and the new film, it seems the town of Derry is okay with the bullying of the Losers Club. Why do you think Stephen King wrote that in? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think Stephen King is a genius, you know, just like, I think he uses symbolism a lot in his work, you know, because, you know, Pennywise, depending on what you believe, may or may not be real. But, um, <laughs> but I think just the bullying aspect of it, it has less to do with the bullying of, you know, Pennywise on the kids, but more so just how society kind of mobilizes it as just a part of life. So even though, you know, in the, in the show, in the movie, in the book, there seem more to be like hypnotized and mesmerized. But even like in real life, you know, we kind of make it seem like, oh, this is just a part of high school. You know, it's just a part of life when it's like, you know, we should treat it as, as bad as, as, as it is, you know, because when you're going through it, it's real. You know, it's not just a, a teen problem. It's like, this is a real thing that we're going, like people go through. So I think that's just something that you want to symbolize is just how we kind of, as a society, try to normalize things so we don't have to actually correct them. Yeah, I, it, there are moments, there are shots where it looks like, like Tosin said, it looks like it's on purpose. Like they're under a spell or it's, um, or they're hypnotized. And I, I think, I think, I think a lot of that's on purpose, but you know, we, we tend to dehumanize, right? We, tend to ignore things that make us feel uncomfortable. You know, if there's a car accident or something, it's not my problem. You know, I'll just watch it on, I'll keep driving instead of stopping. I think, I think what Stephen King did was, was um, he doesn't do anything without purpose, right? So I think, I think it had everything to do with, with um, a kind of indictment on people in general. You know, they're, they're, may not personally be okay with it, but I think as a whole, they're complicit in the bully, uh, or um, you know, seeing what they only want to see. I completely agree, and I think it took, you know, the, the, the Losers Club and all of them kind of coming together to kind of be able to, um, you know, kind of, kind of take that bully to the next level and be able to kind of just take it on and kind of deflect it and kind of, you know, continue to move on. I mean. We haven't gotten to see two yet, but but there are certain things that maybe we kind of you know, anticipate in seeing in, in part two as well that kind of correlates with that as well. So. so, another big question: talk about the portrayal of Pennywise. Uh, do you have a favorite and one? I really try not to compare them because they're so different. Because it's such a completely two different roles, so I try my best not to compare them at all. I feel like, you know, two things could be awesome, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I think we have a tendency to always try to do a favorite, and, you know, of course we have favorites, but it's like, you know, I like, I, have, like, I like food, and I don't just like just one food, I like a lot of food, so I just feel like with Pennywise, same thing, you know, both of them did, I think both of them did respect to the role, and I think as artists, you know, we should just try to re-mimic the same thing, just try to, you know, go out there and, I just have respect for Bill just to be able to take such an iconic role and not feel the, the pressure to try to play it safe and do it exactly how you know, Tim Curry did it. So I think just as an artist, I respect that. You know, because Tim Curry is awesome. And then he did, he, did his, he did his thing with the role, so I'm very impressed. Definitely, I think, um, uh, so the first time I saw it, one of my biggest things with watching it was like kind of a, a comparison. Oh, what's going to be the same? What's going to be different? And um, I kind of had to go watch it again afterwards with just kind of fresh eyes, um, just without thinking about you know us doing it before and just looking at it as a, as a new film. Um, and like Chosen is saying, I mean, you know, and like Jeremy is saying as well, they're both two separate characters, um, and they both did a great job in portraying. And then there's you got to think about the times when they came 
lot as well. I mean, it's almost it's almost like twenty a twenty five year difference in uh, in in the portrayal of the character, and I mean things have changed so much uh, within that time in film um, and kind of with everything and how we watch films. There's so much more that you can put in a film um, now that you kind of couldn't put back in like. I think people forget that we actually filmed it in the 80s, even though it came out <laughs> in the 90s. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that couldn't be done back then, but uh, I, I enjoyed both uh, both characters tremendously. If I saw Bill at a circus, I probably wouldn't go hang out with the back clown. <laughs> Pennywise, I would think, okay, you're kind of cool, you're smiling and stuff, but the other one was a little way creepier. <laughs> I always look at it as it seems to take more to scare people these days, so maybe you had to go to a darker version. I just think of, um, I think if it's apples and oranges, you know, uh, Bill's portrayal reminds me a lot of what Johnny Depp did with Willy Wonka. Um, you know, there's a kind of, of innocence, there's, uh, an immaturity at first, you know, um, a scary sort of internal thing, whereas Tim Curry's was very much like a, an old vaudevillian, you know? It was a different kind of clown. He was a in-your-face kind of funky clown, whereas there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You see this new one, you see Bill's clown, you're not gonna be tempted to take a balloon. <laughs> and there's, no, there's no temptation there. That is scary as hell. <laughs> whereas, you know, you see the little girl in the beginning of our version where she's looking at the clown and <coughs> he's waving. He's like, oh, aren't you so cute? And then the sheep moves and she looks. And there's this whole different thing, this whole different face that just says, oh, yeah, stop now or see it through. Yeah. Just apples and oranges, but uh, both beautiful performances. I think. Brandon and Marlon, talk about working with Tommy Lee Wallace. Uh, very, very, very interactive director. Um, most people don't know, uh, but it was actually his hand that came through the photo album in the actual film. Um, he was actually, you know, uh, we actually really didn't get a chance, like you guys, to really uh, see Pennywise too often. I think the one time we actually really got to um, deal with him outside of our mad, mad photo is um, when we were doing a sewer scene. Um, outside of that, we really didn't get to um, get to see him that much. So um, it was um... no. There's a there's a there's some some really good moments. There's a, a documentary that they're working on right now. John that's, Yeah, yeah. And, it, and there's a lot of footage that Bart Nixon, who was the main uh, special effects guy, <coughs> he shot with the VHS, and, and a lot of that was. Um, us in the sewer and the rehearsals right before we shot and he was very hands-on he's very uh, very much a performance oriented guy and if something didn't make sense to you he would figure it out before you did and he would be totally willing to um, to, to coach us through it um, he did not like me eating turkey sandwiches <laughs> during lunch breaks for sure because it made me lazy and it took me years after to um, have a turkey sandwich again. Um, there were other takeaways from that experience than that, but that one stuck with me for a very long time. I love turkey now. <laughs> but he was very much a um, hands-on director, a hands-on um, performance-driven director, which he knew what he wanted. That's right. He knew what he wanted. I mean, he flew me to Vancouver to get my hair cut just like his. That was the haircut that Tom Lee Wallace had when he was a kid. And I said, oh wow, so we're starting to shoot now? And he said, no, you're gonna go home. <laughs> I said, Wait. But I, I missed the last week of school. of school to come up and get a haircut. And he's like, are you mad? I said, no. <laughs> That's the most awesome haircut I ever had. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I love Tom. So Jeremy, talk about your scenes with Henry. Seems Henry was ramped up from the original on the evil side. Uh, what was it like filming those scenes and working with Nicholas Hamilton? 
it's really ironic because those were actually like one of my favorite scenes to film, just because he's such a nice guy. Like all the bullies were such a, such good people. So it was constantly a roller coaster of emotions because five seconds before the scene, they'd be asking me like, "How was your day?" and then they'd be killing me. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it was it was really good. It was. It was awesome, Nick and, and Jake and Logan and Owen are just amazing people, so it was, it was really fun. Uh, chosen, I, I felt the scene with your uncle in the barn was one of the more powerful scenes in the film. Talk about shooting that. That was awesome. Um, that was actually the first, say, well, first real scene that I shot of the film, you know, because even like watching, you know, 21 Jump Street, I was like very, very, very excited to do the, do the scene and, you know, just to see a seasoned actor act, I guess. You know, we were in a barn and there was a whole bunch of flies and the sheep were smelling bad. And, you know, I was telling myself, this is what a real actor does. He's, he's, I like, grew like, acting like it's really like hard work being in the place. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna stand still even though I have 20 flies on my arm because I'm a serious actor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I think that was just like, um, you know, it just got me hyped for the film. Just so I could like, I can do this, I got this, you know. And yeah, I just think it was a fun, it was fun. I got to hold the stun, stun bolt. And now I never had a stun bolt because, you know, I don't really have use for that in the city. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a good day. So, Jeremy, you chose I, I read the director wanted to keep Bill away from the cast uh, until you had a scene with him. Is there any truth to that? And, if so, what was your reaction uh, to the first time you were face to face with Pennywise? There's a lot of truth to that. Um, we met him once, and that was at the table read, and that was like not even an official meeting. It was just like, oh, shake hands, you're Bill, I'm Jeremy, um, and that was like the last time we saw him, and so we actually got to film with him. And I think my first reaction was like not as much scared as I was, just really excited. It was like, this is the first time I'm seeing this. And I think the public actually saw Pennywise before we did, because they released a picture the day before we were gonna film with him. Um, and I was getting like bad reviews. I was really freaked out because it was getting smashed. Um, so I was really freaked out about that. Um, but yeah, I was just like really excited. Um, I think it was similar, because the first person who had a scene with him was Jack. And it's a scene where we're in the kitchen and his arms broke. And he's just screaming, and you know, he's all in his face. You remember that scene? And um, just watching it from the monitors, the craziest part is that Bill, before every scene, he gets really, he starts talking to himself in Pennywise voice, and starts drooling. Like, that's his drool. I don't want to say I drool when I sleep, but like, this man can drool on command. You know, so I think that was the coolest part, was like, whoa, this dude is for real. You know, he was over here screaming, screaming. I was like, oh gosh, I like before my scenes, I you know, I just came from crappy, you know. Just, it's time to oh, okay, put the food down. <laughs> so I was like, I was very excited to work with Bill. Bill's a cool guy. And especially when he would be in scenes with one of us, it was like a kind of a slow day. And he was really trying to get us amped up. Come on, kids, come on. <laughs> he was yelling at us in his Pennywise form, he was like freaking out. And we were all yelling back at him, it was like a crazy, freaky time. Yeah. But like the five minutes before he gets into a take, he says like this weird shaking thing, yeah. and he freaks out and he like screams at him, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the scariest part, is really the warm up. <laughs> the warm up, what do you have to do, man? <laughs> So, Brandon, talk about the filming the scene when you first see Pennywise in the park. Right, I was a big fan of Tim Curry because um, I was a big fan of Jonathan Banks, who was on a show um, called Wise Guy at the time, and Tim Curry was on Wise Guy. And so I was totally starstruck that day. I went to meet him, and he's like, hey, here I am. So, okay, now that's that. You guys do regular day. Um, truth be told, I never saw him in that scene. He wasn't there. He's that good of an actor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I never saw uh, the guy playing my dad uh, out there either. Um, I did see the skeleton. Uh, a spoiler alert, there's this, oh wait, here. <laughs> um, yeah, I never really got to interact with, with Tim Curry in that scene. Uh, literally, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace is saying, 
okay, so here's a guy over there, and he looks like your dad. I'm like, okay, got it. Okay, now, he still looks like your dad, but he's wearing a couple of pom-poms. <laughs> okay. You know, and then it's like, now he's holding a balloon. And now he's the clown. Okay, whenever you're in, go ahead. <laughs> That's how it was for me. And I didn't have any interaction with him, um, except crafty. <laughs> there was some crafty time at uh, craft service table. Um, there's a, a picture of him, you know, famously just having a cigarette, having a long time. That was by crafty. And, um, you know, can I, can I have a napkin? That kind of thing. We didn't really interface with him until we, uh, at least uh, that I remember, until we were in that, in that sewer. In the sewer scene. And seriously, he, he didn't do any uh, happy dances or anything. <laughs> but uh, what was terrifying for me as a young actor then um, was the fact that we were rehearsing. And then Tommy says, okay, well, let's shoot it. And we shoot it. And Tim Curry is unassuming, this unassuming man in this costume. And when he says action, the guy goes nuclear. I mean, that was terrifying, watching this guy work. It was a master class in, um, in, in, the, in the acting thing. He, he had a little bit of experience before then. <laughs> So Joseph, talk about filming uh, the final fight scene with Henry. Was there some choreography going on? How, how did that go down? That, okay, so um, that was a late night shoot. And that was like the last, uh, like, we'd been shooting the day and then, you know, it was late. And yeah, I'm just, you know, just a little side information. Food at night on set is 10 times better than food during the day. <laughs> so I didn't know that because normally I was shooting during the day. And I just had to, that had nothing to do with story, but I wanted to jump on. But um, um, it was, yeah. So they had, um, when he hits me with the, the rod, they had a, what's it called? A pack on my back. Armadillo. An armadillo. See, that's, that's why we're fresh. You know? <laughs> um, I had an armadillo on my back, which is like a hard shell so I don't get hurt. And we, we, we're in this basement, there's webs and everything, and it's dark. And they say, okay, so we have a, like, a little actor talk together. He's like, I said, yo, go for it, man. He's like, I was already gonna go for it. He was an awesome actor. And um, so we just started fighting. You know, like at first we did the hit and then we did the whole tussle, like the fighting. And that just had more to do with just, you know, bringing energy. Where I'm, I'm sweating, I'm like, oh my gosh, I manual labor. Like, you know, just fighting them off. And I think it was like probably top two favorite scenes to shoot. It was awesome and, um, you know, I, I had a great time. I read the sewer set was gigantic. Can you talk about that for us? Well, in in that sound stage, there was like this huge staircase, which I never went up because I'm afraid of heights. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Um, but Andy's assistant took a picture up there, and it was so cool to see like above everything, because all it was was just like these wooden pipes, and you go in them, and they're so amazingly looking like sewers, and it's like filled up with this horrifying, gross, warm water full of like. Oh, like dolls and, and uh, it was bad. Uh, and you like you never it's it was kinda like brown water. Um, <laughs> like one day that they like had dead bodies under under the water and I was not I was not down oh, yeah. that day. Um, but yeah, it was huge. Um, I think the first day where it was like there was no water in it we actually got to see it Jack got lost. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah, so yeah. Jack. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jack got lost and then we like scared the crap out of him because it was easy to scare him. <laughs> yeah. We took advantage of that. It was, I remember um, the first day, because we had two weeks just to get to know each other, which was awesome. Shout out Ben. Every time we do anything, we say shout out to Ben. He was our acting coach, not Ben Haskell. But um, <laughs> we, it was awesome because we came in, and you guys know the, you guys know like the big pile where the kids were floating in the sky. That was actually real. Like that huge pile, they made a pile probably from the ground to the, a little bit below the ceiling of just toys and, More than and, ch and child's clothing and stuff like that. So, you know, I think that's when I really realized, like, oh, this is a real, real movie. <laughs> you know, because like, you know, as an actor, you know, you, you just work, you're just trying to work your way up and just, you know, you do anything. And that was my first time on an actual set of that magnitude. 
Um, that was a big word, magnitude. <laughs> and, um, magnitude. But yeah, so I was very excited. And yeah, Jack got lost. <laughs> so obvious question for you guys. Who do you think should play your characters in the part two? <laughs> I think I would love Chris Pratt to play that. Woo! Can I go on bus? Yeah, he gets all bugs, starts to gym membership, LA Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> the clown's not gonna get me again. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Wow, I would actually Chadwick Boseman. I would love Chadwick Boseman to play to play my character. Black Panther, I'm excited for that. February. Yes. I already got my tickets. And I got my tickets for resale. Yes. Um, Chadwick or Will Smith is always awesome. Or, or um, David, David O'Yelly. I think that'd be cool too. You know, somebody, there's so many good actors out there. So I'm, I'll be happy with whoever they cast. Uh, third moment, I just want to say that it, original, uh, is the first and only movie to ever make me cry. <laughs> and New School It is the first horror movie that I have genuinely enjoyed in probably Oh, thank you. But anyways, uh, on to the question. Um, <laughs> in terms of comparing you guys' um, portrayals as actors with the uh, old one and the new one, and also with horror genre in general, like what scares people. Were there any differences within the two movies that you noticed um, that you liked or disliked? Like, um, I'm to think of an example. Like, like one thing I like is that uh, the way it scared you, the movie, the new uh, movie, was a very unique way of scaring. It wasn't like your typical like slasher run after me. Like, there's a headless kid in a library chasing me. <laughs> Which was obviously not their vision, as far as I remember. Yeah, there weren't any, there weren't any Easter eggs. Thank you, man. Um, I think okay. Um, similarities that I like. I think the reason why Stephen King has been so successful, other than just being awesome, is the fact that even though he's writing horror horror content, he doesn't, he's, his goal is bigger than just trying to scare you. I think you can only get scared when you really feel for the characters. So I feel like, especially our director, he understood that and he applied it because so much of the film has to do with just the character development and just, you guys seeing us just be kids, you know? Like, you don't really start to see a lot of the, the horror creep in until, you know, almost halfway through the film. So I think I, I enjoyed that because it kind of made you guys actually like our characters more so than just, oh, it's just some kid getting chased or this and the third. So I think I like the similarity between, you know, actually falling in love with, you know, Ben. Like, who doesn't want Ben? He's sweet, you know? Let's get a clap for Ben. Yeah.